Ever since its 2021 launch, there's been a constant undercurrent in the public's thinking about the James Webb Space Telescope. One that cares little for data the JWST retrieves about ancient galaxies or the birth of stars. One that is instead laser focused on a single question. When will the JWST discover signs of alien life? Now, this isn't as unreasonable of a question as it might first sound. One of NASA's priorities is to find evidence of extraterrestrial organisms, be that a microbial fossil in the ancient lake beds of Mars or a simple creature in Europa's subsurface sea. But while the Mars and Europa searches remain highly speculative, the JWST may be operating on a much shorter timetable. As in, it may locate evidence of alien life as early as next year. Back in September, September, researchers using the JWST reported a potentially epoch-shaking discovery. In the atmosphere of the exoplanet K218b, there are tantalizing signs of both water and possibly even a molecule associated with life. With follow-up observations scheduled for 2024, we could be on the cusp of something really big here. Or could we? As we're about to see, there are plenty of planetary scientists who are skeptical of these reports. A skepticism that gets to the heart of one of NASA's biggest modern challenges. How we can ever know for certain if we've really detected alien life. Even among the pantheon of JWST discoveries, this was a big one. Perhaps even the biggest. On September the 12th, 2023, a University of Cambridge research group led by Professor Niku Madhutsahan dropped the results from their recent observations of the exoplanet K. To 18b. Sitting roughly 120 light years from Earth in the constellation Leo, K218b became an object of fascination for planetary scientists. Back in 2019, the Hubble Space Telescope had detected possible water vapor in its atmosphere, a major reason why the Cambridge team had turned the JWST in its direction. But nothing could have prepared them for what they found there. The results showed both methane and CO2 in the distant world's atmosphere, along with a lack of ammonia. As National Geographic summed up, according to theoretical research, quote, a large planet like K218b could only have that ratio of gases if the atmosphere were interacting with water below. The idea that K218b might be an ocean world, one wrapped in a sea far larger than anything on Earth, would have been exciting enough. But Professor Madhutsahan's observations went one further than that. Along with methane and CO2, the JWST may have also picked up evidence of dimethyl sulfide, commonly known as DMS. As for what that means, well, we'll just quote what the Cambridge professor told the BBC. On Earth, DMS is only produced by life. The bulk of it in Earth's atmosphere is emitted from phytoplankton in marine environments. Although the entire team stressed that the DMS detection was low confidence and more observations would be needed, the idea of alien plankton was too tempting for most outlets to resist, and with good reason. Right now, NASA is in the middle of a decades-long search for non-terrestrial life. The Mars Sample Return mission is spending over $8 billion to bring back material from the Red Planet that may contain signs of ancient microbes. Next year, the $5 billion Europa Clipper will embark on a voyage to Jupiter's water moon to see if it could theoretically house living organisms. So, the idea that the JWST has detected a known biosignature in an exoplanet's atmosphere was the stuff dreams are made of. Dreams that maybe some were a little too ready to believe. But we'll come on to the reasons to be skeptical later on in today's video. For now, we simply need to sketch out a couple of important things for this video to make sense. One, what exactly is K218b? And two, how do we even go about detecting stuff in its atmosphere in the first place? I mean, it's really far away. To answer, well, we're gonna take a quick flight of fancy across the stars, blasting off from Earth, swinging across the void of space until we reach a distant solar system some 120 light years away. A solar system that's home to one of the most intriguing exoplanets that mankind has ever found. The broad answer to the question, what is K218b, is relatively simple, even if the details are somewhat hazy. At its most basic, K218b is an exoplanet over 120 light years away that belongs to the class known as sub-Neptunes, meaning it is bigger than our homeworld but smaller than Neptune. Specifically, it's about 2.6 times the radius of Earth, the size of planet that's completely unknown in our solar system. That unknown aspect makes it tricky to theorize what K218b is actually like. Most rocky exoplanets we expect to be like Earth or Mars. Most faraway gas giants we expect to have at least something in common with Jupiter or Saturn. But sub-Neptunes? 
well, simply nothing local that we can compare them to. As the saying goes, like a blind man at an orgy, scientists are groping in the dark. Still, we do at least know enough about K218b to make some educated guesses. For example, we know it orbits its local star, a red dwarf known as K218, in its habitable zone, meaning that were water theoretically to exist on its surface, it would be liquid, just like on Earth. Now, not that it orbits at the same distance as our world, though, with the distance between our Sun and Earth being one astronomical unit, or AU, K218b orbits a mere 0.16 AU from its home star. In the context of our solar system, that would be far closer than Mercury, so close that a year would last a mere 33 days, so close that the angry elder god we call the Sun would fry its surface to an unthinkable crisp. Luckily for any space plankton on K218b, its star's a lot cooler than our own. So cool that the two could practically hug without instantly turning any surface water into steam. And that last part's really important, because if recent theoretical research is anything to go by, surface water might be what planets like K218b are all about. Back in 2021, Professor Niku Madhutsahan, as in the same dude whose team may have detected DMS, published an intriguing paper in the Astrophysical Journal concerning the composition of sub-Neptunes. In its most basic form, his argument was that they could contain a whole new class of exoplanets. Planets which are wrapped in globe-spanning oceans that slosh around beneath the hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Planets that Madhutsahan has since nicknamed Haitian Worlds, a word combining both hydrogen and ocean. If they exist, these water worlds could be unlike anything we've ever encountered. Up to 10 times the mass of Earth and twice its radius, they would be spectacularly hot. So hot that the temperatures would reach temperatures of 200 degrees Celsius. Despite this, the main feature of these Haitian planets wouldn't be a void of steam, but a vast layer of water surrounding a small rocky core, a gigantic ocean that would account for perhaps 90% of the world's entire mass. An ocean that, theoretically at least, should be capable of supporting basic microbial life. As an added bonus, the thick atmospheres of these worlds would mean a greater zone of habitability around their parent star than a rocky planet like Earth, sort of like how Canadians can still strut around in t-shirts at temperatures that would make most of us curl up and die. Given the known abundance of sub-Neptunes, as well as this greater habitable zone, Haitian worlds could therefore be the best places to look for life, especially since larger planets are, as you'd expect, easier to study from afar. Hence, Madhutsahan's team using the JWST to peer across the gulf of space at K218b. A decision that maybe, just maybe, will soon confirm the existence of Haitian worlds. Not that doing so will be easy, as we're about to see, using even something as powerful as the JWST to detect ocean worlds is absurdly complicated. First in January, and then in April of 2023, the JWST trained its eye on the star K218 for a combined total of five hours. During these five hours, split into two two and a half hour blocks, the distant world K218b transited in front of its home star. As it did so, the light from that star passed through the planet's atmosphere. It was this light that was captured by the JWST. That allowed Madhutsahan's team to reach their conclusions about the makeup of the atmosphere. As the BBC explained, quote, that light contains the chemical signature of molecules in its atmosphere. The details can be deciphered by splitting the light into its constituent frequencies, rather like a prism creating a rainbow spectrum. If parts of the resulting spectrum are missing, it has been absorbed by chemicals in the planet's atmosphere, enabling researchers to discover its composition. And that is how we're able to discover what molecules are present on faraway planets. But it's not as simple as just looking at the spectrum and going, hmm, looks like we've got aliens, doesn't it? You see, every detection comes with what clever science types call a sigma value. For us lay people, a sigma value is basically code for how confident the researchers are that this isn't a fluke and they're not going to look like idiots. For example, if you detect something with a one sigma signal, that means there's a fairly big chance that the molecule you think you found is no more real than your high school girlfriend who totally lived in Canada. A two sigma signal is more like listening to some jock boasting to his date about how much he can lift. More plausible, but quite possibly still not real. By the time you get to five sigma, you're dealing with stuff that's almost certainly true like me being bald. Stuff that would require a whole lot of weird things going on to be later disproven. Generally, any discovery needs to be at a bare minimum of three sigma before the science community will accept it. In the case of K218b, the JWST's detection of methane in the atmosphere was at five sigma, so we can basically say that it is absolutely there. The detection of CO2, by contrast, was at a confidence value of three sigma. In other words, borderline, but probably good enough to be accepted for now. What the JWST didn't 
didn't detect with any confidence value at all, though, was water vapor. The water vapor Hubble thought it detected back in 2019? The 2023 results show that it was actually a mistaken reading of methane. Now, the reason that Madhutsahan's team are excited that this planet might be a Haitian world is because the combination of molecules in the atmosphere fits the theoretical model of one. But that doesn't mean we know there's an ocean there for a fact. Or as JAXA astrophysicist and science communicator Elizabeth Tasker explained in a blog post, we have not discovered water on K218b. All we can say is that the planet does not not have an ocean. Now, if all of that hedging is a little bit frustrating, <laughs> well, sorry, but that's just kind of how science works. While we'd love to join you guys geeking out about distant ocean worlds, we wouldn't be doing our jobs properly if we didn't follow the lead of real astrophysicists and treat this whole Haitian planets thing with caution. And that goes double for the most exciting part of all, the idea that the JWST may have detected a molecule that's associated with life. Early next year, the JWST is scheduled to once again train its powerful eye on K218b. During the 2.5 hours that the planet transits across its star, Professor Manhutsahan's team will be aiming to boost confidence in some of their previous discoveries, trying to find harder evidence that there really is a global ocean, trying to again detect that life hinting molecule. DMS. In this, they'll be helped by Webb's mid-infrared instruments, which is optimized for sniffing out evidence of DMS. Given that confirmation could suggest alien organisms, excitement is naturally high, but it should always be tempted with extreme caution for one very good reason. The original DMS detection, the one that spawned countless articles plus this very video, was not a very confident one. By that, we mean it had a sigma value of 1, as in fake girlfriend in Canada territory. Or as planetary scientist Joanna Barstow politely told Chemistry World magazine, it is a very tentative detection. Of course, even an unconfident detection of something that might point to extraterrestrial life is worth closer examination. Confirming the existence of space plankton would literally be one of the greatest discoveries of all time, showing us that life evolved separate from Earth at least once, hinting that it therefore might have done so dozens or hundreds of other times too. Unfortunately though, even if JWST returns a 5 sigma value detection of DMS next year, we still won't be able to just go and scream, woo, space creatures, yay! First, scientists would need to rule out a natural, non-living cause for its presence. And while here on Earth DMS is only associated with organisms, that might not be true on K218b. The main reason? Haishin worlds, if they exist, will be so radically different from anything we know that we can't take anything for granted. When a guy like me appears on your YouTube and starts talking about ocean worlds, you probably think something like, Kuh. Cool, just like that Kevin Costner movie. And you're basically just imagining a planet like Earth without all the landy bits. But Haitian worlds are far stranger than that. Astrophysicist Ethan Siegel did a great piece over on Big Think explaining the difference. According to him, any planet with more than twice the mass of Earth and 1.3 times its radius cannot be a rocky world like the one we inhabit. And any world with a radius in excess of 1.75 times Earth's winds up being far more like Neptune than our home. And Neptune's a pretty crazy place, a fascinating world where it rains diamonds and atmospheric pressures get so high that it creates what NASA has variously called a hot, dense fluid of icy materials and an ocean of super hot water. That Neptunian ocean is way beyond boiling point, but kept liquid by the insane pressure. It's also completely uninhabitable, a hellscape that would kill any known form of life faster than a game of beer pong paid with cyanide. If K218b has an ocean, it might be something similar. Ethan Siegel writes of similarly sized worlds that quote, if a hydrogen slash helium atmosphere reaches even half a percent of the planet's overall mass, the surface pressure will be tens of thousands of times as great as it is on Earth's surface, while the temperature will reach into the thousands of degrees. K218b therefore cannot be an ocean covered Earth analog. And while that's a problem, because if K218b is so freakishly unlike Earth, then we can't assume that an Earth biosignature like DMS likewise points towards life on this distant world. To quote Elizabeth Dasker, we need a lot more information about conditions on that planet to be sure that a biosignature on Earth could not be abiotically created in a different environment. Such studies have not yet been done for K218b or Haitian worlds in general. The quote ends. Now, obviously, a great way to spur such studies would be for someone to confirm the existence of DMS in K218b's atmosphere. So, JWST hunting for it next year is still an immensely exciting prospect. But it also means that the chances of detecting alien life may be further away than we hoped. Especially when you start to look at all the other potential problems with Haitian planets. Now, 
Back in September 2020, the bleakness of the pandemic was suddenly broken by a bit of a spectacular news story. As the rest of the world was going mad in lockdown, a team of scientists reported in the upper atmosphere of Venus a molecule that's thought to be a sign of life. What followed was a gigantic circus as the media leapt on the announcement as proof that we'd just discovered Venusian space critters. To this day, there are some who believe the choice of two Venus probes for NASA's next discovery mission, announced not long after, was influenced by the phosphine find. Fast forward to 2023, though, and the overwhelming consensus is that we've no hard evidence for phosphine in Venus's atmosphere. It might be there, but the 2020 findings were no way near robust enough to trigger such a high-profile announcement. This is a major reason why everyone's now being super cautious about DMS on K218b. But there are other good reasons too, including the big theoretical issues with Haitian planets. One such issue is the probability of runaway greenhouse effects. Because of all the hydrogen in their atmosphere, Haitian worlds would react to sunlight differently to Earth. Place one with atypical atmospheric pressure into the same orbit as our planet, and recent research has shown that the oceans would overheat and boil away. To have a chance of sustaining liquid water, you have to drag the planet out beyond Mars, beyond Ceres, right out beyond the edge of the asteroid belt. Finally, at a distance of 3.85 AU, a typical Haitian world with atmospheric pressures 10 times that of Earth would at last be able to keep its ocean. The problem? We've yet to detect a single Haitian world candidate that falls within this new zone of habitability. That includes K218b. Even though its star is much cooler, if this new research is right, it should still be too close to support liquid water. But even if we were to confirm the existence of an ocean, that doesn't mean it would be inhabited. It might not even be inhabitable. The issue is to do with the sheer weight of so much water in a planet-wide ocean. So once again, quote expert Elizabeth Tasker, quote, A huge global ocean puts so much weight on the planet that it throttles the geology. Forming under high pressure, deep sea ices seal off the rocky parts of the planet and, at the very least, shuts down the carbon silicate cycle. If the carbon silicate cycle is cut off, then alternative mechanisms are needed to adjust the greenhouse gases to keep the planet temperate and provide the nutrients that would be available from the silicate rocks. End quote. Without these nutrients, there's nothing for life forms to feed on, nothing to create the chemical stew that would get life going in the first place. While it's theoretically possible meteorites bring enough nutrients into the ocean, it's also possible that any Haitian planets that do exist are just lifeless water worlds. We won't really know until we get to properly observe one and find out what their deal is. All of which is our really, really roundabout way of saying that while the possible detection of DMS on a watery exoplanet is indeed cool, it's also unlikely to lead to confirmation of extraterrestrial life. At least not at any point in the near future, and not without substantial extra research. And look, we'll be honest with you, this wasn't the conclusion we were hoping for when we started making this video. We'd much prefer to now be telling you that the scientific proof of funky space fish is just around the corner. But, as the saying goes, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And as we've hopefully demonstrated, DMS alone might not be evidence enough. Still, that doesn't mean we have to end this video on a down note, because aliens or not, the study of K218b is still incredibly fascinating. With the JWST, we are now, for the first time, getting to know some of the different planet types that we share our universe with. Massive worlds far bigger than Earth that are just waiting to be explored. Worlds that we're slowly unlocking the mysteries of, one observation at a time. It may be that these worlds turn out to be uninhabitable nightmares. It may be that the Haitian worlds theory turns out to be correct, and oh, we're surrounded by a multitude of living ocean worlds. The point is, we won't know without studying these far-off places. Whether they eventually detect life or not, Professor Madhutsahan's team are doing the world a favor by starting to chip away at these mysteries. In doing so, they raise the possibility that, someday soon, some other scientist takes a reading with the JWST and really does find a biosignature. Really does get to declare to the world, yeah guys, it's aliens. We can only hope that it's a day that arrives sooner rather than later.